Hey guys, me Rebel, it's Chris Tomer here on this Friday. All right, here is our combo on radar. We've got the moisture from what was Priscilla coming up through Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and then you've got this storm system parked off the West Coast, which is actually what's helping to siphon all this moisture in from the Southwest because it has turned the winds. The, the winds carry that moisture in. The issue is all of this precip is running into very warm air. So we're dealing with, and we talked about this yesterday, very high rain snow lines. So you're going to have to be on the very highest peaks to get snow out of this. Otherwise, it's going to be rainfall. All right, let me take you to Utah. So here's your radar. Notice the green. That is going to be your rain. Um, you can see these, these waves of moisture coming in with... Uh, with this remnant moisture, one right there, another one up in the Salt Lake. And some of this did run over the top of the high Uintas up there. We'll have to see what they were able to squeeze out. I mean, we're looking at 13,000 feet as sort of that rain snow line up there in Utah. And it's 13, maybe even starting at 14 in Colorado. And then gradually, over the next 24 to 48 hours, it will come down. Well, it's not going to come down a lot, but it'll probably come down one or two thousand feet uh, down to a lower elevation that's probably going to do it here's radar out of colorado and there it is you can see that moisture that wave coming in and this is again all just post-tropical moisture with what was uh, hurricane priscilla um, it does look like we're probably squeezing out some snow you can kind of see the blue there over the Sawatch range um, some of the collegiates uh, above 13 14 thousand feet up there so again very high elevation stuff all right, let me uh, take you to um, the uh, intro here and some of my bullet points. So some of this is similar to yesterday, but there's our, I'm really looking at three storm systems now. So the first one is what we're seeing happen right now, the front and Priscilla, 10, 10, 11, and 12. High rain snow lines. Now eventually in Utah, that'll probably drop down to 9,000 feet at the very end of this event. In Colorado, 13, 14 at start, at the start, and then potentially dropping down to 12,000 feet. So still very high elevation. At 12,000, that precludes a lot of places from seeing snow. Same with the Wasatch. I mean, at 13,000, you have to be in the high Uintas or it's pretty much rain everywhere. Um, now, in the San Juans, I'm still expecting in Colorado, southwest Colorado, on the 14ers, one to two feet. I'll show you some specifics on that coming up. Then you've got this second storm system, and it's very interesting as well because it's a front, and it draws in moisture, uh, tropical moisture from, and it's actually tropical storm Raymond right now, and I might show you that on the water vapor here in a sec, but so it does a similar maneuver, it comes in as a front, and draws in this post-tropical moisture, and it juices up the system. And so that could produce some heavy snow, and that one looks maybe a touch cooler than what the one we're dealing with right now. The third storm is even colder. That one will have a much lower rain snow line, a lower elevation, 1017 to 1019. Here are the best odds of snow for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. I won't go through all of them, but you can clearly see one, two, and three. All three storm systems lined up right there. All right, here's what I'm thinking. Um, so as far as forecast snow totals, the reason this is important is we're dealing with a rain, high rain snow line. So the forecast models are having a difficult time seeing some of this with the way that they're built in the terrain. But nonetheless, because we're squeezing out so much moisture uh, at the very highest of elevations, especially in Colorado, down in southwest Colorado, if you're above 13,000 feet, you're going to see heavy snow accumulation out of this. One to two feet Mount Eolas. That's one of the 14ers in southwest Colorado. The top of Silverton Mountain Skier, remember, the top of it reaches over 13,000 feet. So one to two feet up there. Now, Palmyra Peak is a low 13er from what I recall it's about a 13 one ish but it's part of Telluride ski area it's it's a hikeable part of the terrain a lot of it's going to be rain snow a mix but I think six inches is not out of the question up there on Palmyra especially towards the latter part of the storm system maybe into tomorrow Mount Wilson one to two feet Mount Sneffels up to one foot so not quite as much on that northern escarpment 
of the San Juan Range, capital peak one to two feet. So there are definitely some bullseyes with this. Let me show you satellite and give you the lay of the land here. So this is water vapor. And on this, your dry air is in the oranges, the reds, and even some of the black colors. Your moisture is right here in the whites and the blues. And notice there are two distinct features with this. Here's our area of low pressure in front. And then here is the moisture that's streaming in from what was Priscilla. So two of those things, both items meeting and meshing over the west right now and creating this setup. I want to take you to the south on this. Okay. So this is still water vapor. There are the remnants of Priscilla. And then you've got Raymond down here. So they're stacked up. And this, is, this, has, been, this has happened so many times this season with all of these Pacific tropical systems. We're siphoning in this moisture. That's number one. And then Raymond will do a very similar maneuver um, down the road. And so it's like we're not seeing it into this at all. In this forecast it just it just continues um, and then what's happening on the downside is you're getting all this dry air that's pouring down through parts of Texas clipping Dallas running all the way into the Gulf and this is kind of unusual to see this down through New Orleans um, it's really dropping the humidity levels in some cases um, and the temperatures uh, are, are down a few degrees as well but that's but the, the the key is that the air is a little bit drier in these places that are used to more humid conditions. It's kind of interesting to see that pattern flip like that. All right, let me take out of the forecast uh, radar here, and uh, let me load this in. Here we go. So you're looking at what the radar should look like at a future time, including intensity. We'll start this at lunchtime today, Friday, October 10th. There's your moisture from Priscilla. There's your front hitting the west coast. All right, let me move this into the dinner hour. There's dinner time. Everything's still in place. All right, here we are, the early morning hours on Saturday, October 11th. And look at this slug of moisture over Colorado. There's moisture over Utah, Arizona, New Mexico as well. But, folks, this is really heavy stuff. Look at some of the, uh, um, the yellow returns. You've got a little bit of moisture up here in the parts of Wyoming and then quite a bit up here with the storm system itself in the Pacific Northwest and Northern Tier. Um, okay, let's move ahead. Here we are, lunchtime on Saturday. Things start to dry up across the four corners. Still some afternoon, afternoon variety, though, popping up in that daytime heating. Here we are, dinner hour on Saturday. And a lot of the emphasis, this is the 12th of October, no, 11th of October, into the 12th, is up here in the Pacific Northwest and Northern Tier. Still a little bit of moisture kind of working its way in to the Four Corners, but not nearly as much. Um, okay, here's early on Sunday, October 12th. Notice the clearing in Utah and Colorado, much drier. Uh, most of the precip is running up into the Pacific Northwest and Northern Tier. Um, there's lunchtime on Sunday. There's dinner time on Sunday. Here are the early morning hours on Monday, October 13th. And now we start to see it. See all this? That's the, uh, that's the moisture, the Vanguard moisture from um, what was Tropical Storm Raymond. And you've got a new front that's kind of working its way into the West Coast. So that's the start of, a, of the second storm system. So that's we, we've seen the end of the first, and now we're already starting to see the second one um, start to take shape. Let's look at atmospheric pressure anomalies. We'll do this today. This is up at about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. There's our area of low pressure hitting the west coast. And keep in mind, you're seeing moisture stream in from the south. So with these images, what you're looking at, or what you're looking for, are areas of higher than normal pressures or lower than normal pressures versus the 20-year average. And boy, look at this. By Sunday the 12th, look at how deep this area of low pressure is digging into the Rockies. And you've got, looks like, wet weather over the Carolinas and some of Florida right there on Sunday as well with lower than normal pressures. This would represent an area of higher than normal pressures up there with those, those brighter colors. But this is, uh, so that's Sunday, October 12th. Here's the 14th of October. Wow, look at how deep that area of low pressure is off the West Coast. That's, that's like three standard deviations below the 20-year norm. Area of low pressure tracking up the, the uh, East Coast right there. Uh, with wet weather and storm, storminess and wind, likely, with that. 
So that's the 14th of October. If we were to look down the road, oh, and by the way, at this point, you'd be drawing in that moisture from Raymond out ahead of that area of low pressure. Uh, down the road, like I said, around 1018, 1019, we would have a whole third, a separate third storm system that would rotate in or pivot in from the west across the, uh, the inner mountain. But guys, look at this. This is the time height forecast for Silverton Mountain Ski Area down there um, over the next three days. So we'll start right here. That's the current moment. The atmosphere is starting to moisten up, and you're starting to see more green. And guys, this is a loaded forecast. Look at all of that green right there. Higher humidity levels, moisture in the atmosphere. Look at the lifting of these wind barbs um, running perpendicular to those, those lines. That's a lifting wind into the mountains. Now, but again, high snow levels, you got to be above 13 to really get the big stuff. But this forecast, you read it in this direction that takes you into the future, in that direction, and it is loaded from today, tonight, tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, and even into the morning of the 12th, there's a little bit of leftover moisture, and then the drier air begins to move in after that. But that's going to be heavy snow. And like I said, one to two feet at the very top of Silverton Mountain Ski Area, I do think that is possible and not unreasonable. Look at the liquid that this squeezes out over Wolf Creek Pass. I pointed this out yesterday. This thing just surges, accelerates up. The ensemble mean, this is liquid, is if everything was falling as rain, over five and a half inches over Wolf Creek Pass, which is in southern Colorado. It's somewhere between 10 and 11,000 feet, so it's too low to see snow. This is all going to fall as rain. Five and a half inches, that's like months worth of precip in this area. It is remarkable. If this was all snow, we'd be talking about a 100-inch snowstorm here. It doesn't all fall as one at one time, but we're looking at probably one, two, maybe even three surges, three storm systems right there in southern Colorado. That's just remarkable stuff. Let's talk about snow. This is the five-day snow forecast here. And um, so again, this, is, this probably accounts for two storm systems. So you've got some in Colorado, and they're finally starting to pick up on a little bit more down here in the San Juans. Like I said yesterday, the, these models are going to have a difficult time resolving this. But you've got plenty of snow up here in Montana, parts of Wyoming, Alberta, B.C., and then look at parts of the Sierra getting lit up. Uh, anytime you see the, that purple pink, that's over six inches. Of accumulation so let's let's zoom into this and again this is a 10 to 1 ratio so looking at Wyoming parts of Montana Utah parts of Colorado your biggest snow accumulation over the next five days is right up here southwest Montana Absaroki Beartooth Wilderness Yellowstone parts of the Tetons a little bit into the Wind Rivers maybe up to six inches there but certainly all of this area in pink purple is well over six inches um, in Utah, you're looking at once we cool things down, it's a little too it's too warm right now, precluding pretty much all of the Wasatch for snow, but certainly the high Uintas will be getting snow. But once we cool things down, the latter part of the first storm system that we have now and the second one will be a couple degrees cooler. We should get up to six inches, maybe a little bit more in the Wasatch, and certainly um, six inches or more up there in the uh, high Uintas. In Colorado, there's not a lot of snow north of I-70. A lot of it is going to be south of I-70, so we'll take a, a closer look at that coming up. Here's Montana. This definitely squeezes out six over six inches of accumulation through Glacier up into a lot of uh, the Powder Highway. Um, and then you've got, of course, we talked about the snow down there, southwest Montana and parts of Wyoming. Let's zoom into Colorado here. So again, a clear dividing line here around I-70. There's more accumulation south of I-70 above 12, 13,000 than anywhere else. And this really doesn't account for a lot of the snow that's going to fall above 13 in particular. Um, but you can see it, it, it's, it's really, it's, it's seeing something here. And it definitely highlights um, the San Juans with over 6 inches. But I'm telling you, there's going to be up to 2 feet on a lot of the 14ers down there. So that's going to be your bullseye. That's going to be your hot spot in those areas. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this update. Looking for big precip uh, with not just this current storm system, but then there are two additional ones behind it. Thank you so much for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.